welcome to the new every experience with god's word promises to be refreshing and transformational receive today's message with high expectations as it brings power light and a fresh anointing to your life father in the name of the lord jesus this morning i ask that your word come to us unhindered uninterrupted by any satanic forces influence or activities i ask for illumination i ask that our hearts be flooded with so much light in the name of jesus christ amen and amen this morning we started a teaching series across all the new churches this morning in the month of april and we started a new teaching series titled the wonderful name of jesus i thought you were going to be excited about that um the name of jesus the bible says is a strong tower the name of the lord is a strong tower the just run into it and they are safe i'm going to teach for a few minutes and i'm going to help us understand that powerful name um, that we gather around every single morning particularly on Sundays one of the myths about church is that many people go to church without the understanding of the God that they are coming to serve and it's almost like when we say in the name of Jesus Amen, it's almost like a cliche you know how many of you growing up don't raise your hands, okay did your mom or your dad did you ever see them put a Bible under your pillow? And they said that whenever you know you put your Bible under the pillow, demons will not come around you. Or did you ever see your dad or your mom in their car? They have Holy Bible inside, right? Uh, but sometimes that car doesn't start. <laughs> Even they put ten Holy Bible, the car might not still start. You have to push the car together because you see until you have the understanding of the name and you have the understanding of what you are gathering about it's just like a waste of time so this morning i want to teach on the name of jesus the wonderful powerful name of jesus and you see there's never a time where we talk about that name the bible says at the mention of the name of jesus there's never a time when we talk about that name that what that name can do would not show in the midst of the people whenever the name of Jesus has been mentioned what the name of Jesus can do would be seen amongst the people and so there are two things I want you to open up your heart for this morning as I begin to teach number one I want your heart to be opened in understanding so that you can understand that name of Jesus and number two I want your heart to be opened so that you can receive an impartation of what that name can do glory to God and so I want you to get ready for that are you ready yes, are you sure yes, all right if you don't have a name here raise your hand it, it means that when they get back to you you were nameless if you don't have a name here, raise your hand. Okay, if you're in Nigeria now, you have at least five names. Raise your hands. Some people have 12. Some people have 13. Some people have 40. But they can only remember one. If you have more than 10 names here, raise your hands. More than 10. Wow. Okay, if you don't like the name that they gave to you and you change your name, raise your hands. Fiona. Some people they give them um um baby me so cake baby did they then when they get amongst their friends they call themselves Sophia. You are not Sophia anything. You know the name is so powerful that when I say if I come to this room now and I say Jide, you know what happens? Everyone who doesn't bear that name is disconnected from that name. Because it, to, it doesn't apply to me. If I come and say, Jide, everyone who bears that name doesn't, doesn't say anything. But if I then come and say, Jide, all the people that bear Jide in this room, 
would pay attention would give attention why because i've called on something that they must respond to oh yeah i know you hear what i'm saying it's like i'm just going on my own morning one morning and somebody says tade 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 i'm not going to answer because i'm not tade but if i'm going on my own in the morning and i'm alone and somebody says shola shola i don't even need to know who is calling me all i need to do is i will respond first to the person who is calling me so i at least i can even know what the person is calling me for oh but we do not have an eye priest that cannot be taught with the feelings of our families so he's not even trying to know what the problem is he gives attention to it that's why we give name for separation if you observe this when you have very hardly would you see a mother and a father who would have four children and they would give the four children the same name bio 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 if imagine they have four boys because there's going to be problem in the house how do you separate the names do you say bio one bio two bio three that's why you observe that when it comes to name the parents usually give us names based on their one revelation through the process of the babyhood or through the pregnancy period number two based on desires of the name that they love sometimes no revelation and sometimes number three is based on the experience of the journey and so if you had a prophecy of a child they can say Oluwa Shola why or Olu Shola meaning that God produces wealth out of the experience so they give you that name and if you you know if you you know nomenclatures and names you will understand that when a name is given to you people expect you to respond in that name and that's why when you do something at home with your parent or anything even your friends your friend will say you're not even behaving like your name why because your name must reflect you that's right. are you getting what i'm talking about they are not going to give you a name you cannot be are you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You're not going to get a name you cannot be. The name you have is a reflection of what's made possible with your life. The name that you have. You see, that is the same way with the name of Jesus. But you see, many of us call that name very casually because we don't even understand it. If you see an Agama lizard now walk past you, hey, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You see cockroach walk past you. Hey, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So what has happened is that as Christians and as believers, sometimes we've lost the potency of that name and what that name is able to do. And this morning, I feel compelled to help, help us teach, teach you and help you grasp and help you understand the wonderful name of Jesus. So let's go from the beginning. Apart from the prophecies in the Old Testament, Let's go to the beginning and look at where those names or where that name was first mentioned in the New Testament. So turn your Bible with me so that we can do a little bit of expose with this scripture this morning. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 20. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 20. I'll read. It says, But when, but when he thought on these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, he says, fear not. He says, take unto, thy, unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Verse 21. Look at what it says in verse 21. This is so powerful. It says, now, and it shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For it is, and it would be, to save his people from sin. Now, you see, the first thing the angel of the Lord was saying right there to Mary, to Joseph, was to give him the abilities of the child. What this child is going to do. So if I say, for example, um, Pastor Shemi Reye, I say, please stand up. And I say, is a footballer. I just say he's a footballer. Do you want to be a footballer? Ah, there's money there. Look at this guy. Ah, okay. 
And I say, do you want to be a footballer? And, oh, oh no, no. I'm introducing him to people and I say, oh, meet this guy. His name is Shemire and he's a footballer. The moment I say that, what's your expectation of him? Football. You are thinking, oh, this guy plays football. Now, you imagine one day, you see him, and I say maybe he plays for a, a league, maybe Arsenal, any league, or any club. What is Arsenal as a club? Okay. For that, Liverpool. <laughs> so I said, he plays for Liverpool, right? And your expectation is that next week, Saturday or Sunday, you are supposed to see him on the pitch. You have an expectation. Number one, you're expecting number one is a footballer because I've said he's a footballer. Number two, you expect that when you go and check the TV screen, you see him right there. Now you get to your TV screen, you turn it on, and you look out for Shemire. His name is not on the list. His name is not the substitution. And then you forget about it. You didn't see him. Then you are going on one day and you see him play cricket on your TV screen. What happens to you? You are confused. Why? Did his journey change at any time? Why? Because it means that Shemire was doing something else that he was not supposed to be doing. Because he's out of line the moment you see him do that. So when the angel of the Lord says that he would save his people from sin, the angel of the Lord was giving to mankind the expectation of Jesus. What Jesus, meaning that Jesus must not be found doing any other thing by saving, apart from saving his people from sin. And God is not the man that would lie. So if the angel said he was going to save us from sin, and sin there doesn't only mean kissing and pecking and sleeping with somebody that you're not supposed to sleep with. Sin there also means the chain and the stronghold of the devil over mankind. So when he says he's going to save his people, now if you watch football, please sit down. If you watch football and they want to play penalty, there are two things that can happen for a penalty. It's either it enters into the goalpost or it's saved. And saved there, it could either be that the goalkeeper punches the ball or it goes over the bar or hits the bar, whatever, you know, any of those cases. So I want to play this penalty and I get there and I play the penalty and the goalkeeper saves it. What happens? Everybody will clap. Oh, good save. The moment Jesus died on that cross is exactly what happened there. It's like the devil wanted to play a ball and Jesus saved it. And the response, if it's your team that got that game saved, is that you rejoice. Yes or no? So when Jesus said it is finished, what more believe is rejoicing? Are you getting what I'm talking about there? Next verse, it says that it's going to save him from sin. Verse 22, it says, and now all and now all this is to come to pass that he might fulfill which was spoken by the prophet saying behold the virgin would be a child would bring forth a child and his name shall be called Emmanuel open up again with me another text and Luke chapter 1 and verse 30 Luke 1 30 Thank you, Jesus. Are you there? It says, And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Fear not, Mary. All right. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Listen carefully. I'm reading the Amplified Version. It says, And you shall name him Jesus. For he will be great and he will be called the son of the most high God. And the Lord God would give him the throne of his father David. Look at what he says there. He says, and he would reign over the house of Jacob, which is Israel forever. And his kingdom there shall be no end. Verse 34, and Mary said to the angel, how will these things be? Since I'm a virgin and I have no intimacy with any man. Then the angel replied to say, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High would overshadow you. Now, I want to show you a text in the Bible, Luke chapter 4. This morning, I just want to build a foundation for you. Thank you, Lord. 
thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Luke chapter 4. Okay. Luke chapter 4, verse 30. Let's go to, no, let's start from verse 18. Let's do verse 18. Verse 18. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Jesus is speaking right here. Let's start from verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And he opened the book and found the place where it is written. Verse 18. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring the good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim, to release the captive the recovery of the sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord now you can see it on the screen right okay I want you to underline it text after text the things that Jesus came to do one after the other let's go back to verse 17 verse 17 all right let's read it together everybody one two ready read Next verse, one, two, three, go. Number one, he has done what? Okay, so I write that down. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the, to the poor. So, this morning we are talking about the JD of the name of Jesus. What's the job description? What's that name supposed to do? Let's highlight those, name, those things. Number one, he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Please write that down. What's the next thing there? Number two. To do what? So write that down as well. To heal the broken hearted. So you see the healing ministry of Jesus is found right here. Yes or no? Number three. So write that down as well. The captives there means the people who are lost in sin as well. Amen. Number four. The blind eye don't only speak about those that cannot see. It talks also about illumination. What your eyes cannot see, what your ears cannot hear. Illumination. Number what is next? All right, number five is what? Those who are bound, write that down. Number five. Number six. Proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Write that down as number six. So, can I have six guys? Just come out. Six solid guys. That doesn't have a girlfriend yet. Oh, just come, just come, just come. Just come. I don't want six guys. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, thank you. Look at me, everyone. If you hear what I'm about to teach you as I begin to close, it will bless and change your life completely. Someone's like, yes, I'm closing. Okay. I like this church. change your life forever that when you mention the name of Jesus you know when we say Jesus Christ just let me add this quickly the word Christ then means the anointed one the word Christ there is not Jesus son name Christ is not Jesus son name Christ there means the anointed one. The anointed one and his anointing. Now, we have six things that we wrote out. Yes or no? It means that when Jesus gets to a place and this young lady is praying 
I felt in the name of Jesus in the previous area of my life the possibility of the to do's of God. It means what side is to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, what side is to bring illumination, but all of this needs to be like this is the mandate of Christ. Are you getting what I'm talking about here? Now, if you check everything you want to achieve in life, if you check everything you are going through in life, every single thing is bordered around those six. There is healing in it. There is illumination in it. Which is recovery of the sight of the blind. Then means what you need to do next. Is it inside here? Are you getting what I'm talking about? The gospel to the poor. Leaving your hand with you like it's nothing broken. The smoke of poverty is still here. So every single thing is written in the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 18. You see, whatever you mention Jesus, what's the first one we have there? To the poor. So if you are going through tough times financially, and you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, concerning these finances, what you are doing is that you are compelling that anointing one, that anointed one, and his anointing to fall for you in that area. Are you getting what I'm talking about? What's the next one? To heal the broken hearted. Healing. Oh, Father, I'm sick in my body. In the name of Jesus, you fight spirit of cancer. I command it go. In the name of Jesus, the anointing of healing in the name of Jesus shows up. Are you getting what I'm talking about there? What's the next one? To the captive, those who are bound. Nothing, there's nothing called generational curses. Because the anointed one has come to release those who have been bound in the name of Jesus. The sight of the blind is broken. Are you getting what I'm talking about? What's the next one? You, you don't have you don't know what to do, you don't know the right decision to make, you don't know where to go, you are roaming around the circle, it seems like you are moving backward. Lord, I need clarity. Lord, I need to know what next to do. We give you a sign to the blind. What's the next one? Those who are oppressed. That's a, that's a whole teaching in itself. That's believer's authority. But there are satanic oppressions really. But I'm going to get to there towards the end. Yes, those who are oppressed. That shows up as well. What's the last one? Acceptable year of the Lord. That's a whole teaching of its own. But I don't want because I still have some things I want to talk about. That one shows up as well. All is seen in what God can do. All is seen in what name can do. So that name did not only come to save you from sin. Everything you think about in life is bothered around all of these things. That name can do it. Are you getting what I'm talking about today? Somebody shout in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. So let me quickly begin to show you a few things. Who will meet to the book of Mark chapter 16 and verse 17? Mark 16, 17. Are you getting something this morning? Yes, Are you being blessed this morning? Yes, Mark, Mark chapter 16 verse 17. Let's read that scripture together everyone. Mark 16 17. One, two, three, go. shall follow those who do what? On what? In any name? In some name? Through which name would all men be saved? So he says that if you believe in my name, there are signs we are going to see that you believe. Do we have believers there? Are there any believers in this house this morning? So, in there that, I'll give an example. Daughter, and when my wife was crying me and saying that my daughter has certain attributes of, of me, 
and I was just laughing about it and we just whining each other about it now she has some signs because she believes in my name it means that she came out from me so if she doesn't act like me if there are no signs that correlates us together then there's a problem and you get what I'm talking about and so it means that when you are a believer there are certain things that comes with you so when they say you are doing supernatural things it's not really a complaint it's a normal way of life you don't clap for the fish because the fish is swimming the fish is wired to swim and so when we hear the sick we are wired to it are you getting what i'm talking about we are wired to heal the sick we are wired to pray for the sick we are wired for the signs of the signs why the signs shall follow them that believe in my name in my name in my name let's read another scripture number two john chapter 14 and let's look at verse 13 john 14 and verse 13 don't do yourself john 14 and 13 are you there all right let's go one two three go whatever you ask him well whose name which name what did he say would happen okay let me give an example um please come watch this because Gusayami respects me and she's compelled to do whatever I say so he doesn't know Gusayami for I know Gusayami and Gusayami loves and respects me he doesn't know Gusayami before or anything then he meets her outside randomly and then asks Gusayami to give her to give him a phone so let's try let's assume you don't know him from anywhere and goes and you just know him just met at the bus stop or in the same Uber saying give me your phone would you give it to me try now give it to me would you give it to me <laughs> okay come no keep standing come then I say um, I say go and meet beside me tell her that Pastor Shola Akodwa says that you should bring a phone. Go. Why did she give it to him? Is it because of him? Is it because of his face? Is it because she knows him from anywhere? What compelled her? Wait, 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 wait. What compelled her? Did she see? What did she hear? The moment the name was mentioned, everything that conversation was talking comes to pass. Everything that conversation was mentioned. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? So, praise be to God, the name of Jesus is like the gates of the dead that are going to open. Everything was inconsequential until I told him, tell Pastor Shola, until that name was mentioned. It was that name that caused a hand to move. Everything remains at the point of rest until an external force is added. That external force is the name of Jesus. That external force is the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. He sees by the authority in the name of Jesus. He says, therefore, because I see it's not just him, I see it's not just him, but perhaps all of them, but it's in the name of Jesus. Everything that's said is the same. Everything is the same. That's why I don't understand when we're worshiping God and the name of Jesus, people are putting their hands in the pocket. Because that every name must bow there is not only satanic things. It's also in the Bible. The name of Jesus was supposed to suffer and cause our enemy to be slain. So in the process, we are so used to just hearing God's name being mentioned that we are thinking that it's really the name of Jesus. I see Jesus' name. I see Jesus' name. Yes, it's so powerful. 
see that the approval of Adonai goes to sell this product he puts a seal that I own this person now that's why the Bible says therefore let no man trouble me because I bear on my body the trademark the seal the seal the seal so it's not only Apple or Nike that has trust to it I have the seal of power I have the seal of possibilities I have the seal of greatness I have the seal of glory I have the seal of favor I have the seal of wonders I have the seal of supernatural power listen let me close now let me close now thank you Jesus so how did Jesus get his name this is just an introduction teaching um, and we'll go deeper on this some other time I believe you know your pastor is going to teach very deep on this this was a great introduction so how did Jesus get his name number one Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 4 Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 4 Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 4 Together, everyone, one, two, ready, go. Hold on. So, number one, how did Jesus obtain his name? What is inheritance? What's an inheritance? I always like to use this example to explain it. How many lawyers do we have here? Lawyers, okay. So you know what a title deed is. It means that, um, please come, Pastor. Let's assume this is a piece of land, a 30 acre of land. This is right here. I'm the owner of the land. I'm the owner of this land. So I then say, from now on, this land belongs to you. But before, so thank you, sir. But before I do that, I sign for him a title deed. Like an assignment, I sign it and say, from this day forward, this land no longer belongs to me. This land now belongs to him. What happens then is who bought the land initially? Who is the rightful owner of the land? Now, Based on what we've done, who now owns the land? Why? And I gave him a title deed. Now, the title deed I've given to him now means that whatever he wants to do with the land is his own business now. I can no longer dictate for him what I want him to do with that land. Why? Because I have given him the authority over that land. That's why I never understand people or doctrines who teach everything in Christianity but exempt the name of Jesus. Doctrines that focuses more on angels and angelic teachings and worshipping of angels or doctrines that focuses more on speaking to Jesus through his mother. And I hope I'm not shaking some tables here. But the Bible says, and Jesus Christ himself in him upholds every other person. So in the drawings of the spirit, Jesus is no lesser than anybody else. He's the governor of the spiritual. He's the governor of the spiritual. He's the protocol of ascending, of entering into things that God wants us to enter into. It's Jesus. How he got it by inheritance. Now, I hope we also understand that inheritance there doesn't only mean until somebody dies. It means I can inherit, I can tell my daughter that she inherits my PS5 and I can write to her and give it to her. So you can find out one day I wake up and have one boyfriend and give it to a boyfriend that will collect it back. <laughs> Amen. But how did she earn it? By inheritance. I gave it to her. I gave it to her. By 
inherit dance. I gave it to her. Guess what? She didn't even have to do anything for her to inherit it from me. So number one, Jesus got his name, the seal of his power, by inheritance. That's why the Bible calls him the firstborn amongst many brethren. Is the thank you is the son of the living God. The name by inheritance. Number two. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 19. Ephesians 1 verse 19. Ephesians 1 verse 19. Are you there? What a sweet presence of God right here. Are you there? All right, let's read it. One, two, three, go. Oh, it's not there yet. I thought you said you're there. All right, let's check it out. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 19. Are you there? Alright, you can open your phones or your Bibles and let's read it. It says, Of His power towards us who believe according to the working of His mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and made him to sit at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, and he put all things in subjection under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all things. Number two. How did Jesus get his name? By conquest. The Bible says, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made an open spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Having spoiled. And so, by conquest, you know, when I was growing up, I don't know if you ever did that, guys here, um, wrestling. Did you ever watch wrestling? And did you ever fight with your pillow? Ladies did that too. Oh really? I'll take my pillow then on the bed. I'll carry the pillow like this. Bam! They're done. I'll be the one referee. I'll be the one fight. One, two, I'll, then I'll come out. Then fight it again. Then eventually I win. Can you imagine? And when I win, I then go and get a belt. Did you ever do those things? You 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 you, you know cardboard. Then you now do like this, now do like this. The belt is only given to that person who wins. That's why he says, after sports, the principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. So Jesus got the power and the authority of his name by conquests. He disarmed principalities, he disarmed power. The scripture we read right there, he put everything in subjection to his feet. And so God highly exalted him and then gave him a name above every other name. Glory be to God. Number three. By bestowal, the name was bestowed upon him as a form of honor. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 9. Ephesians 2 verse 9. It says, Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name above every other name that at the mention of the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and things in earth and things under the earth and every thong shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Write these two things down. I'll close with this. There are two major uses of the name of the Lord Jesus. Number one, the name of Jesus is used to access the throne of God in prayer. The name of the Lord Jesus is used If you if you go out early and you have a roommate or somebody you stay with or your father or your mom whatever it is and then you are coming back to watch a football match or watch a game or watch a TV show and you don't want to miss any part of it usually when you get to your door what happens you hit the door fast bam 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 why because you want somebody inside to respond to you very quickly yes or no 
when that person responds to you they go and open the door why because you've hit the door and they know that you are the one there so they give you access in in the same way that name of jesus gives us access before the father if the name of jesus gives us access before the father you see you will never get anything from the father without that name because god gives to you not because of you but because of his name jesus let me tell you something and i want this to mark your mind forever this is the protocol in heaven can i have two people come i want to show you something that will change your life forever two people stand here as god stand here one more person as the petitioner person praying to god come you stand here as jesus what i want to show you never let it forget your mind or leave your mind forever the access belongs in the fullness of the ones and days that dwell therein god is the owner of the fountains of the earth the great monarch of the universe so he has everything in his power but this guy right here which is you you can't and i want you to hear this very carefully the protocol is that you can't just stumble and say god give me to me because if you, ah, because of time i can't go into that in the old testament there is a order to enter before the priests and there is a protocol for the priest to enter before the lord it has to be the high priest it's only one person that can go beyond the veil to the holies of old is one person but now we know that that old order is done away with now we know that jesus is now our high priest that's why the bible says we do not have a high priest that cannot be touched so whenever you pray this is what happens jesus receives your petition and goes before the father because he is always before the father and whenever he's before the father the father cannot deny him why because of the price that he paid because of the blood that was shed so god is not seeing you are you getting what i'm talking about so the bible says he is the father that gave us intercession for the saints what is intercession intercession again is what abraham god if you find a 50 people if you find a 30 people if you find a 20 people if you find a 10 people would you still give them the land god says no that's intercession it's like conversation it's like pleading on behalf of so when you say in the name of jesus i want so so and so jesus is taking you before the father and saying this person i went to the cross for this person i died for this person i resurrected for this person i ascended for this person that the whole world have come to put their spirit on my side and it's the cross i said it was saying and they will not finish what i said because of what he bought on the cross and i say in the same way you he gave me the petition the prayer that i received from jesus has come so at the end of it all it is actually christ paid for because christ is like the lawyer in the courtroom who says i paid for his provision i paid for his blood i lost it i paid for his healing so he cannot be denied and in the court of heaven there's no court case dismissed you win all the time why because the same protocol that we are brought to before the side is enough in god for his response to be brought all the time the response to love Jesus is used to take authority. Glory to 
Jesus. How is the name of Jesus used to take authority? Because there is only something demons, principles and powers respond to. They don't care about your look and how fine you are. There's something that causes them to shiver. It's the name of Jesus. And every time you call that name, you compel demonic powers to bow in the authority of Jesus. I share the story with you now close. I'll just pray for a few minutes. wrap this up. Please rise on your feet. Rise on your feet. Last year, the feast and a service like this, a particular young lady, you see, these things are not only for pastors for anybody who believes in the name of Jesus. Do I have believers here? This young lady came out on the line. I was praying for people who were sick in their body and I laid my hands on her. The moment I laid my hands on her, and this is different teachings, I felt a rebellion of the anointing. It's like something that's supposed to flow as virtue, like a pushback of it. In the moment I saw that, I knew that that was an infusion of a demonic spirit. And so right there, the Lord gave me an instruction. I knew what to do exactly. I knew where to lay my hands on her and all of that. The moment I laid my hands on her years or two years, I heard a loud scream. And in an open vision, I saw like warfare going on. I saw in that vision as though someone was tussling for her life. She was saying out loud, Oh my, what did I ever do? I, I own her. I own her. Ask her. Say things with me together. Ask her. There are covenants we have together. Ask her. So I hear all that came right. That was the demonic spirit saying, Ask her. And we know too much not to discuss or negotiate or interrogate demonic spirit. We come in the power of the name of Jesus. As many as believed him, the Bible says to them, give ye power. Do you know how old David was when he fought Goliath? Do you know how old Joseph was? Do you know how old um, Daniel was when he was before them Nebuchadnezzar? It has nothing to do with your age. It has everything to do with your revelation. And that morning, that day, I said to her, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you foul spirit, I command you to go. She fell down, of course. The demonic spirit left her. After a few minutes, she woke up back and told me, Pastor. I said, Pastor, I felt like they removed something on my inside. I said, I've never felt this light all my life. And she started telling me the story of some of the things she did as well. Let me warn guys, people here. You see, there are vices that sometimes you interact with that are demonic in its oppression. Yeah. And you may never know. It's not everything that is vibes and inshallah. It's not everything that is on social media that you, 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 you jump onto now. Now some guys are there now thinking of oh, all oh, my savings now is going to go to my mother. So everything that happens out there is the devil trying to touch your faith. So you are married, but you are suspecting. It's an attack. Therefore shall a man leave his mother. Women don't marry mommy's boy. My mother said, my mother said, my mother said, my mommy is calling us. My mommy wants to cancel us. My mama, my mama, my mama, my mama. If you marry the mother, if you marry the boy, you have married the mother. And it's a sin for a woman to marry a woman. You have married the mother. 
today's message because God still has so much he wants to share with you. So stay connected every week to experience uplifting and life-changing moments in his presence.